Hello everybody, this is Global Warming Skeptic, and here to talk about the Electorio map, but we're going to look at it from a different angle this time. Let me make sure this is going. It is? Okay. So, first of all, just some brief updates. Trump has electorally made the race much more competitive, and it's actually starting to show. As you can see, he finally took back Arizona, he took back Nevada, he took New Hampshire. That was a shocking turn. Let's show you how much that was a steep decline. And, and just briefly on that, that just shows the volatility of the Hillary supporters. Because I do believe, based on enthusiasm of the campaign, um, which can be measured based on rallies, social media, etc., that there's a lot more excitement around Trump, and that's going to give him a more solid base. Um, Florida keeps meandering back and forth. They can't make up their minds. But I think it's important to understand what these polls really represent. Let me just show you. Now, as you can see, these samples of all these polls... 957, 600, 1150, and 500, but it's likely voters. It's not registered voters, and let me explain what that means. Basically, you have the, you take a survey of registered voters, and you break them down demographically by race, etc. And then what you do is you put a weight on it that determines how likely each specific demo is to vote. For example, an upper class person is more likely to vote than a middle class person is much more likely to vote than somebody who is poor. Poor people and minorities historically have very low turnouts. And this is the problem with these polls is that whether or not you think they're rigged and there's a lot of debate going on on either side about oversampling and about why they oversample the excuses that are used, but let's just put it from the perspective of honesty. Even if all the polls are faithful, honest, don't use nefarious sampling techniques, etc. The reality is, is that they are using a likely voter formula that is based on previous elections. It could be based on the primaries, it could be based on Obama's turnout, it could be based on historical precedent, but either way they're relying on past data sets and here's where I think they're going to run into problems with accuracy. And this is why I think the probability of a Reagan landslide is incredibly high. I couldn't quantify it, but I could say it's greater than 20%. Because all these likely voter formulas, they can't take into account Trump's populism as well as the unpopularity of both candidates and how that's going to affect turnout in all the demographics. If poor people decide they're going to go out and vote, and vote against Trump, then that's going to be bad for him. But more importantly, if Hillary Clinton, her enthusiasm does not produce turnout, then the narrow lead she currently holds means nothing. And as you can see, this is going to be huge in electoral analysis, because you have Michigan within five. You have Pennsylvania, which is within three. That's within, I believe, yeah, within most of the margins of error. Or right at the margin of error. You have Virginia that's closing. That's still uh, gonna be... And of course, it's like I said before, you have New Mexico which is the dark horse, and you f we finally got a poll out for the second, and it's Clinton plus three, which 
and it justifies what I said in my last video on these polls. Do not count out New Mexico. Because, wow, it's I'm more likely to go for Clinton. It's not in the bag, not by a long shot. Let's look at Connecticut here. That's kind of out of reach now. It was going a little bit toward Trump, but... See, now you have Maine back in. That's not going to be a huge deal. But you have District 2 up here, which I keep talking about. Which is probably going to go to Trump at the, at the end of the day. And so, I just wanted to post that briefly. Let's look at Colorado's for completion within three. But, it's like I said, all these are likely voter polls. They're not doing registered voters anymore. Let's look at Georgia. That's within five. Everything is LV, likely voters. So they're all using that formula to determine turnout. And let's be realistic. That is a very unreliable formula, to say the least. Anyhow, thanks for listening, guys. God bless.